Why is it that some of the best songs in electronic music, especially in techno, sound so rich and so exciting and stay interesting for more than six minutes, even if they just consist of very few notes that are also repeated again and again and again? The top 1% of producers know that the magic lies in the sound design. And so in today's tutorial, I'm going to share with you three little known sound design techniques that will take your tracks from good to great. They will help you turn even the most basic melody into an interesting hook. And so by the end of this video, I promise that you will walk away having massively improved your sound design skills. Check out this super simple melody here. It just contains three notes. So with proper sound design skills, you can actually turn it into the foundation of a track that sounds like this. Now, assuming you know the basics of sound design, you are familiar with envelopes and LFOs. Those are the two most common modulation sources. So you can map an ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release shape onto a sound or a function in your synth. And you can also use an LFO, a low frequency oscillator to move certain parameters in the shape of this LFO and just cycles through that. Now, that is all not wizardry, but the first thing that I believe makes a huge difference in the way you design sounds is, do you actually modulate your modulators? Let's take a look at our sound design example. As you can see, I have mapped envelope one, which is this one here, the shape you see down there, to the frequency of the filter. So depending on attack, decay, sustain, and release of this envelope, this filter starts opening up. What you also notice is that this ADSR envelope is changing shape. And this is being controlled by this LFO here. And I promise you 99% of amateur producers don't even know that the option of modulating modulators exists, but this is exactly what keeps stuff evolving and interesting, especially if you have just a short loop and you dial in something like a four bar rate on the LFO. That means like over four bars or even longer if you want to, this shape starts to change. And this is how the music evolves and you could even map another LFO to this LFO to then modulate the modulator that modulates the modulator. I think. Okay, so that sound design trick is something that I call a low-hanging fruit. Once you start implementing this, your tracks will already sound so much more interesting. And by the way, if you struggle with finishing tracks, I have something for you. It's called the Finisher Framework, my three simple steps that you can use to finish at least one great sounding song per month. This is my promise for you. This is what I want you to achieve. You can go from there and finish even more if you want. You can grab it at pickyourself.com slash framework. The link is also in the description. I would love to see you over there. It's a very short and easy to consume guide that is still packed with value. Go to pickyourself.com slash framework and let me know what you think of it. So for my next sound design trick, let's start with a trick question. Listen to this and tell me why we are hearing more pitches than we actually see here. So we see three different notes. But I've used something super sneaky to actually bring in more notes. And that has to do with the way I designed the send effect that goes into the return channel. Let's take a look at that. So it's pretty obvious that some delay is going on. Yes, I've used the Ableton Echo. I've put it into the one side into dotted eighth notes, the other side into just normal straight eighth notes and in ping pong mode, which is why it's giving me this nice stereo bouncing ball effect. But the additional note comes from Ableton's shifter plugin, and this is an absolute gem in my opinion. Now, as you can hear, there is some grainy texture to the sound, and this is because I'm actually mapping an LFO as a modulator to the window size of this shifter plugin. So the window size is basically almost like the recording buffer that it uses for the incoming signal. So it detects it, and depending on how broad or how small you set that window, it sounds a little bit more crunchy or a little bit more clean. Now, if you want stuff to sound even more crunchy and interesting, you can actually go into the ring modulation. So let me just show you what this sounds like. The normal one. So in this case, I've decided to go for the tonal setting. I've put in seven semitones up and I also put in this little spread here. And the spread is also almost like a little detune function for the whole thing so that it wobbles a little bit more. And I just like how much this, how much character this adds to the sound. So in essence, my second sound design trick is to use pitch shifting effects on your send return paths, especially when you send stuff into reverbs, into delays, because that can create almost like an interesting doubling function or a different different harmony that complements your original lead sound, especially if you then work on the sound design 
of that sound effect even more. And this is exactly what we're gonna do in our last sound design trick. Now, if you got any value out of this video so far, consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video. It shows me that I'm on the right path and it also helps you because the algorithm will suggest better videos to you. So a big problem that you will encounter when you play around with echoes and reverbs and you put them like really loud into your mix is that they will clutter up everything and your lead line will get kind of washed out. I found that one of the best solutions to shape this is to gate those reverbs or delays in interesting ways. So what I'm using here is Shaper Box 3. Now you can also get away with free plugins. I've actually done a video recently about a special Max for Life device that I can recommend and another cool workflow that you can use just using stock devices for the stuff. Shaper Box is just very convenient and you can draw in shapes like for example this one here. And what you can see here, so that it completely mutes this delay path when parts of the original signal hit. Now you could draw in other shapes and make interestingly rhythmic gated types of sounds. So in a nutshell, my last tip is to use rhythmical gating techniques like this one that I just showed you for your sand return paths, especially on delay paths and reverbs. It will help you with your mix. It will help you with your original sound design to make it more interesting. Leave a comment below what you think of this. Leave a comment below if you have any other topics that you want me to cover. And I'll see you in the next video.